Yo, 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 good morning, good morning, welcome back, welcome back. You already know who it is, it's your boy Made Man Mello coming to you back live with another top 10 from Vinny's Tube. Go check it out, click like, subscribe to it. This is top superpower action anime from 2011 to 2018. I got my pad out, I got my pen out. Because you already know I said in my other videos, I need to get on some of these other animes that are out here. And I need to get caught up because I'm behind in a lot of stuff. But, you know, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But let's go on and check it out. Let's get it. Yeah. That was my favorite. That was my favorite, uh, did you say arc? We've all seen a lot of anime characters with amazing superpowers, but there are some anime that stand out for different reasons, including direction, storyline, and character development. When you add a superhero aura that's mesmerizing into the mix, then we really can't stop secretly wanting to have those powers. So here's a list of the top 10 superpower anime of this decade. At number 10, we have Bungu Stray Dogs. The story revolves around Nakajima Atsushi, who's kicked out of his orphanage and now has no place to go. While starving on a riverbank, Atsushi saves an eccentric man named Osamu Desai from drowning. Desai is a member of a very special detective agency that deals with crimes and incidents that other authorities won't deal with. They have supernatural powers and deal with cases that are too dangerous for the police or military. After inviting him to solve an incident involving a rampant tiger in the area, which Atsushi was skeptic in agreeing to help, supernatural powers get revealed in him and they decide to invite him to be a part of the agency. The tiger seems to have a connection to Atsushi and by the time the case is solved, it's clear that his future will involve much more of Desai and the rest of the detectives. Okay. I will check that out. Definitely will check that out. Okay, I've been gunning to watch this. I've uh, been gunning, I just haven't. I don't know why. Number 9 is Mob Psycho 100. 8th grader Kageyama Shigio has psychic abilities and is nicknamed Mob for lacking a sense of presence. Although he looks inconspicuous, he is in fact a powerful esper. He could bend spoons and lift objects with his mind from a young age, but as he grows older, Mob realizes that his psychic powers are strengthening and becoming more dangerous. Choosing to suppress his power, the only thing he wants is to become friends with a girl in his class named Subomi. To avoid his power getting out of control, he constantly lives under an emotional shackle. To gain control of his skills, Mob finds himself under the wing of Arataka Reagan, a con artist who exploits Mob's powers. Mob wants to live a normal life, but a barrage of trouble keeps coming after him. With the suppressed emotions growing inside Mob, his power may break through its limits. Oh shit. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Of course, seven dead sins. That's my jump. At number eight, it's seven deadly sins. The Seven Deadly Sins were once an active group of knights in the region of Britannia who disbanded after they supposedly plotted to overthrow the Leon's kingdom. Their defeat came at the hands of the Holy Knights, but rumours persist that these legendary knights called the Seven Deadly Sins were still alive. Ten years later, the Holy Knights captured the king, becoming the new rulers of the kingdom. 
Nanatsu no Tozai follows the adventures of Elizabeth and her search for the seven deadly sins. With their help, she wants the kingdom back and to find justice. Meleon! Always wanting to know what this was about. At number seven, we have Magi. The story set in an alternate recreation of the ancient old world with several regions and nations that resemble real life counterparts from that time. There are also several magic castles full of treasures and traps known as dungeons, and each of them is the layer of a powerful magic being, a djinn. Individuals that manage to overcome the trials of a dungeon and earn the allegiance of its djinn are known as dungeon capturers. Dungeons are said to be the work of Magi, a class of rare magicians who also help people build their empires by guiding them to a dungeon. A boy called Aladdin travels the world with his friend Ugo, <laughs> a djinn that Aladdin can summon with his flute. He then meets Alibaba Saluja, a young man aiming to one day explore the nearby dungeon Amon and claim its treasures. Aladdin and Alibaba eventually become friends, taking the first step in an epic adventure that will decide the fate of the world itself. Okay. Number six is My Hero Academia. In a world where people with superpowers Shit. known as quirks are the norm, Izuku Midoriya has dreams of becoming a hero despite not having a quirk. From an early age, his only dream is to be a superhero as he's always looked up to All Might, the world's greatest hero. After being the only one to try and save his childhood friend Katsuki Bakugo from a villain, Izuku meets All Might who bestows upon him his own quirk one for all. He chooses Izuku to be his successor, making him the ninth owner of the quirk one for all. He's initially very skinny, but has gained an array of well-developed muscles after his 10 months of extensive training with All Might. The story follows Izuku's entrance into UA High School, a prestigious high school famous for cultivating the next generation of superheroes. As Izuku and his new friends try to balance their hero training with ordinary school duties, they must face new challenges and the looming threat of an evil organization established by All Might's arch nemesis, All For One. They did that from the rescue mission. Yes, sir. He beat the mess out of that number. Saitama! Oreva Shiro, Yapteiru Monoda. At number 5 we have One Punch Man. This story revolves around Saitama who chooses to be a hero as his hobby. In a world of superhuman beings, Saitama is a unique hero. He's trained himself and grown so strong that no enemy is able to defeat him in battle to the point that he can effortlessly defeat any opponent with a single punch. Now that it's become so easy, he's bored with his superhuman power and frustrated at the complete lack of strong opponents that can challenge him. He displays a laid-back attitude to everything and for the most part, he finds his overall hero life pointless. Then comes Genus, a 19-year-old cyborg who wishes to be Saitama's disciple. Saitama joins the Hero Association in order to gain official recognition with Genos and there begins the adventures of One Punch Man, an ordinary yet extraordinary hero. that boy there. That boy is some special. Okay, that's good. I need to catch up on JoJo. I definitely need to catch up on At JoJo. At number four, it's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. 
This is one of the most outrageous and joyous series you'll ever watch. You owe it to yourself to experience it. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is the story of the Joestar family, starting with Jonathan, a mild-mannered Englishman who strikes up a rivalry with Dio Brando, his adopted brother. Because of a cursed mask, Dio becomes a powerful vampire and Jonathan swears to stop him. After learning a fight move called the Ripple, which allows Jonathan to kill vampires by punching the sun into them, he goes on a quest to defeat Dio for good. How does this already weird concept get weirder, you ask? Well, you're in for a ride. On the whole, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is melodramatic and action-packed. You should definitely give yourself the gift of seeing it yourself. <laughs> I got to. I had to do it for myself. To answer anybody's call for help. Did you hear? Oh my God! Leave my head together. Back on Titan. That final season, baby. At number three, we have Attack on Titan. 2,000 years from now, mankind was nearly exterminated by tall, monstrous humanoid creatures called titans. Humans survived by walling themselves in a city protected by extremely high walls, even taller than the biggest of titans. These giants killed humans for pleasure, not out of hunger. They instinctively attack and eat humans on sight. To ensure their survival, humans what? lived within defensive barriers and hadn't seen a titan world. in over 100 That's one years. World. Teenager Eren and his sister Mikasa witness something Hail horrific as the city the walls are destroyed by a colossal titan, reigniting the fight for survival against the man-eating abominations. After witnessing this, Eren joins the brutal war against the titans and vows that he will murder every single titan and take revenge for all of mankind. So, I know this that fate's got a lot of fights. Some of them look badass. Number two is Fate Zero. The Holy Grail War is a contest founded by the Einsburn, Matau, and Tosaka families centuries ago in which seven mages summon seven heroic spirits to compete to obtain the power of the Holy Grail, which grants a wish to each member of the winning duo. With the promise of granting any wish, the omnipotent Holy Grail triggered three wars in the past, each too cruel and fierce to leave a victor. Faint Zero is the story of the fourth Holy Grail War. The much-hated Margus killer Kiritsugu Emiya, a man who's sterner and more merciless than anyone else, is hired by the Einsburns. Now Kiritsugu faces off against six other participants, each fueled by unique desires and ideals. Kiritsugu finds his greatest opponent in Kirei Kotumine, a priest who's trying to discover his true nature in his quest to find the Holy Grail. <laughs> Hunter. And finally, at number one, I gotta we finish have the rest. Hunter Hunter. Gon leaves his home on Whale Island, determined to become the best the hunter rest. possible, in the hopes of finding his father, who was I'm a hunter himself and had right long ago abandoned they... his young son. Beat to become the, um, a hunter, he must pass the hunter examination, where he meets and befriends three other applicants, video game. Kurubika, Liorio, and Kilua. The four of them take the hunter exam, so I'm still with it, with its low success but rate and high probability of death. Throughout their journey, Gon and his friends face a lot of hardships and confront many monsters and creatures. In the process, they learn what being a hunter truly means. Can these four pass this formidable hurdle to become the best hunter in the world and will Gon eventually meet his father? Well, watch the anime and you might just find out. So what do you guys think of this list? If there are any particular videos that you want us to create, then comment below and let us know. And of course, leave a like if you've enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't and hit the notification button so you never miss our new uploads. We'll see you next time on Vinitube. Okay. 
So yeah, again, a lot of anime I need to catch myself up on. I'm definitely going to be trying to finish Hunter Hunter. Try to finish um, what else? Try to finish JoJo because I I just saw the new season that they're gonna be premiering on Netflix. So I did. <laughs> I got a lot of work to do. Um, some new anime I need to go ahead and start. Mob Psycho, of course. Uh, the Stray Dogs. And uh, Magi. Magi looks dope. Magi looks dope. Definitely. Definitely looks dope. And also, I made like a little list yesterday when I was at work. And I was looking at all the anime I need to go ahead and start. Like, I made a list of all the anime I done watched. I watched quite a few. I'm a little bit proud of myself, but, you know, I need to get, I need to catch myself up. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm slacking. Because <laughs> I am in some, I am in a couple groups where I just feel like the oddball because I haven't seen or finished things that far. So, I need to go ahead and get my anime game up. So, without further ado... Thank you for tuning in. This is your boy Made Man Mello. Like I said, go ahead and check out Vinny's tube. Go ahead and like, subscribe. The link will be in the description below. Go check out all the other top 10 and every other kind of category he, they person has on their channel. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Peace.